is the 7 News Special Report. Lynn Martinez in the 7 Newsplex breaking into programming to bring you a, a police pursuit of this dark blue, uh, what police say might be a stolen van. Uh, this is I-95 southbound. We've been watching this for the past few minutes or so. Uh, he is weaving or she weaving in and out of traffic and then picking up speed right now was on some of the side roads but uh, is determined not to stop. Again, police are telling us this could be a stolen van. It looks to be one of those vans that has storage in the top there. It's uh, navy blue uh, heading southbound on 95. We've got 7's Ralph Rayburn following this uh, stolen, alleged stolen vehicle. Um, Ralph, can you tell us exactly where you're at? Uh, we're coming through the Golden Glades interchange right now southbound. We were, the vehicle was in the HOV lanes and is kind of uh, swerved back and forth now. We want to uh, pass along what information we heard when this originally started. Uh, there was a, a report of a stolen uh, cargo van uh, in the uh, in the Dade County area and apparently a man without any clothes on stole that van. He's a, a mental patient and he was having some issues, stole the van and uh, they located the van just a short time ago. Some uh, police officers uh, taking that information. You can see him weaving in and out of traffic here as he continues to go in the breakdown lanes there on the what would be the uh, southbound lanes of uh, of I-95. We're just passing about 151st Street here. Actually, we're yeah 151 Street. You can see. Uh, Lynn, as we always do, we uh, warn and caution our viewers about uh, the fact that this is live television here. We're not 100% sure how this is going to play out, but right now, police officers on, on the uh, ground in, in, in vehicles uh, are following, and they've just gotten up, uh, I, be I believe it's Air 13 from Opelaka Airport. That's one of the Miami-Dade police helicopters, and he is now down below there. Uh, uh, calling out information to the ground units as to where they are. We also heard just moments ago now that they've asked uh, Florida Highway Patrol, as you see some uh, debris fall off the front of the vehicle there, uh, they've asked Florida Highway Patrol to come and assist because as you know, they're the experts in that pit maneuver that we've seen so many times here. But again, now the vehicle here southbound on I-95, we're coming up to about one, our next intersection up here will be 135 Street. Uh, moving at a higher rate of speed than a uh, regular traffic you can see right here. Uh, so a uh, dangerous situation as always when uh, uh, people, uh, especially when you steal something and take it for a joyride, I guess there. So that's where we are right now with it, Lynn. All right, so let me make sure that I heard you correctly, Ralph. Uh, for those of you just now joining us, is a police pursuit on I-95 southbound. Uh, this dark blue stolen, what it's called a cargo van. Uh, police getting reports that it could be stolen. Uh, Ralph, you said that perhaps a man without any clothing on and some mental issues jumped into this van and took off. Is that what we're dealing with? That's that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're hearing. And there just went by a trooper there. That trooper uh, would pop, was probably going to uh, see the vehicle going by now and start to respond. Let me look at my window, see if I can see exactly where that's happening. Okay, there it is right there. Yeah, we'll bring the camera back out here a little farther. We don't want to lose sight of that van, but for right now, he's on his own, except for the police helicopter that is above uh, giving out information as to his exact whereabouts. So we're coming up on uh, about 119th Street southbound right now, Lynn. Okay, so 119th Street southbound uh, I-95. Any time of the day, 95 is always packed, but we're dealing with the middle of the day. Uh, and this driver has done, thank goodness, knock on wood, a pretty good job of, uh, from what we've seen in the last seven minutes or so, not uh, hitting anybody, hurting anybody, but he is definitely in the uh, far left lane there. I guess he, what would that be, the HOV yeah, lane, we did, Lynn, we, express we lane? Did, yeah, we, in the express lane's correct. And we did see him on 183rd Street. I know that you were watching, but he, uh, was, he was coming westbound mm -hmm. and he, he swerved across the median to get away from the police officer on the ground and was heading uh, westbound in the eastbound lanes there and actually came upon uh, traffic coming right at him and had to go back across the median before he entered the uh, on-ramp to get onto I-95. So right now, let me see here, this is uh, 95th Street. 95th Street just past the 95th Street southbound uh, and he's, on, he's in the breakdown yeah. lane right now. You can see there's other traffic there and he's having to slow down because of slower traffic coming up right ahead of him. Well, that would explain uh, some of the debris maybe falling off that we just saw a few moments ago. And as you can see, the driver is now passing that left driver uh, in the regular lane sure. and just really taking off on speed. And you're right, Ralph. FHP, uh, Ralph just said, there he is right there. Been called to There's assist. There's your FHP. 
Yeah, there's your FHP car coming up, the one that passed them. The, that, that vehicle, that police officer there was just cruising down I-95, and, and this vehicle went speeding past him, so he knows that something's going on, probably got on the radio there, and they're advising him exactly what he's going to be dealing with. So he's what they're what he's trying to do now, of course, is, is parallel the, op, the, uh, the vehicle that's ahead of him, or, or stay pretty close to him, uh, without making the driver or inducing the driver in any way to do anything crazier than he's doing at the time. We're going to uh, get over here a little bit. It That's looked it, like Joe. he Thanks. pulled back a little bit. Uh, obviously, all FHP yeah. troopers and other uh, police uh, municipalities are in communication with each other. Um, right. And he's right behind go. him right now. Right. Here's your you pit go. maneuver. We're going to see it. If we can get over a little bit there. There we go. He's got him. He's hit him one time. Has it spun him around guys. completely. They'll keep going now. We've got other officers. You see the county officers. That was the original call there. He's hit him twice now. I think our record is four on the pit maneuvers, especially with the van that he's weighs probably more drive. than the vehicle that's following him right now. But he's going to do it again there. He's got kind of to spun around now. He's completely turned around. They're going to see officers get out of their vehicles if they can. He's rammed them right, rammed the back of that police uh, car, that trooper's car right there. And he keeps going. Oh, we're coming. We're still moving here. I'm hearing them say on the radio. And we've got the two vehicles here. There's several more uh, uh, a little farther back up north in traffic on I-95. But right now, this officer is uh, de bound and determined to bring this vehicle to a halt. Is sacrificing quite a bit of the car there to do that. He's just uh, lost part of his front of his car there. So we've now got the county vehicle here. Well, that That's uh, continuing to follow. And that looks like about uh, 79th Street. Yeah, just a... Uh, little south of about 71st Street in the eye now southbound a ve single vehicle police cruiser that we see right now following that vehicle they're calling for more there's another police officer's vehicle they got these are all these guys are now going to parallel and stay with this vehicle until they can get another trooper up here to try to take this into custody as soon as you as soon as the the way the the uh, laws work here is that if he he's going on the ramp now, this is going to be the ramp to uh, the 112 Expressway here. So we're going to go be going westbound on the ramp there, and so it appears right now that ahead, the two Rob. police cars are are going to follow, but he, they're going to follow him uh, by going taking the other ramp. He's Stopped. stopping right here. Let's see what happens right here now. He's come to a stop. All right, so just uh, he's let gotten out. Know this he's is gotten alive. out and he's running. He's got his hands up. Okay, he's running. Let's, I want to warn everybody, this is a, a, a live developing story. Um, warn everybody that Ralph is yep. going to pull out a little bit in case something Let's go on the other side, Joe. happens. He's, he might be jumping over the overpass. Right, he's which getting is a down. Fall. He's getting down because he's got an officer here with the weapons drawn right here coming up now. All right, they're going to take him into custody. He's given up. He's on the ramp. Two officers now approach. Okay, so this man does have clothing on, uh, but we did hear reports earlier that this van he was driving in was allegedly stolen, um, that he was having some mental issues. But the incredible news is he got on the 112 overpass, which you just saw Ralph show us, uh, stopped the vehicle, jumped over uh, to the other lane, basically, in the opposite yeah. uh, end of traffic, and, yeah, and Lynn, is as arrested. We, as we've seen before, all, all it's all hands on deck here. That's a gang uh, task force officer there with the baseball cap on. So they were probably working in the area, heard the call go out for you know, all hands on deck here to try to get this vehicle to stop, and they have now done that right now. He does it look like he has that, something uh, around his right ankle, Ralph. I'm not sure if that's a yeah, sock yeah, he's or he's got, and he's got some, bracelet. He's got some tags on his wrist, too. Uh, okay. uh, kind you might have if you were in some kind of a facility or some in, in someone's care. So again, he's in, in custody here. Bring the camera back yeah. out here real quick and show you that's the overpass ramp that takes you uh, either uh, east to northbound I-95 or south and then west to uh, the 112 expressway. Uh, his vehicle back up here, you can see there's uh, some damage to the front end of it. There's an officer now checking that vehicle there to make sure that there's nobody else inside there. And they're now uh, giving out information on the radio for other responding units where exactly what they call the QTH, the location they want them to respond to. So that's all going down right now. Traffic will be affected uh, for some time as this uh, individual is escorted to a police car in no shoes, uh, shorts, and a shirt. Uh, incredible that no one was hurt. That, that FHP trooper did a tremendous job in those uh, attempted pit maneuvers, did slow him down, but his vehicle was quite a bit larger than the FHP vehicle, jumping over the overpass there, or the divider, I should say, and being put in a, in a police car. Successful end to this police pursuit. Nobody hurt, as far as yeah, we can see. 
Yeah, and you're right about it. That appears to does appear to be a, an ankle monitor on his uh, on his uh, left leg there. So he's in back of uh, car number 7780A, and uh, let's see if it's affecting any traffic. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you could pull out, Rob. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, the, there's a little bit of a backup there. Uh, that's the ramp. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's not so yeah, bad. Not I thought bad. I would expected it to be a little bit worse. But again, uh, this all coming to a conclusion here, live on our on our air again. All right, Ralph, thank you so much for that. That is a successful end to a police pursuit we've been following here. We'll have more on this developing story on 7 News at 4. For Ralph Rayburn, I'm Lynn Martinez. Back to programming. This has been a 7 News special report. We now rejoin regularly scheduled programming.